guys, Stu here. And today is time for another little movie catch up on my channel, which you may not have seen for a little while. I can't remember the last time I did one of those because, well, I actually was reviewing a lot of films that I was seeing because I was doing all right for a while. But then February happened, got a little bit busier, and there are a couple of films which slipped through the cracks, which I wanted to talk about to you guys because I had some shit to say about them. But I just didn't get round to doing that because... I may be the worst person ever. And then I remembered, hey, I could just do little, tiny versions of those reviews in a small movie catch-up video for you guys. And the lazy part of my brain said, fuck yes, hot diggity damn, we're doing that. So that's what we're doing. And of course, any good catch-up would not be a good catch-up without a cup of tea. So grab beverage of choice. You don't have to be as British as me. You could go for something crazy like... Lemonade? Grab your beverage. Let's get straight on into these bad boys. So the first of today's catch-up reviews is for Train Spotting 2. And I don't know why I didn't get a full review out for this one. Because I love Train Spotting. I was very excited for this one. It was one of my most anticipated of the years. And I loved it. So I loved that the full cast was able to come back and Danny Boyle as director. I don't think this could have been done as well under any other director. So Danny Boyle's vision here is fantastic. He really does do a great job in the directing front. It's just as refreshing and unique and creative as you'd expect from a Danny Boyle film. Not perhaps as iconic as the first one is, but I wasn't really expecting that from this one. I was just happy to see a decent sequel to the first one. And the story in this one surprised me as well, in that it did show a lot of stuff that I didn't know I wanted to see from these characters from the first one. Because if you'd have asked me when I first saw the first one, hey, do you want a sequel to Train Spotting? I'd have been like, hell fucking no, well, what a sequel to that shit. But I'm actually happy we got one in the end. It deals with a lot of themes which I think are really interestingly explored, such as like growing up and looking back on your former self. And I just think that was amazingly realized and actually made for an incredibly moving film. I wasn't expecting to be as moved by this film as I was, but yeah. Yeah, crying happened a lot through this film, which I know isn't a surprise because it's me watching any film ever. But yeah, it happened. Great performances, great direction, a fantastic soundtrack. Not as iconic as the first one and not as amazing, but I didn't expect it to be. So if you go into it knowing that, I think you're going to have a good time. I had a really enjoyable time with Trainspotting 2. I'm going to go ahead and give it a four stars. And now to break the video up with a suitably timed sip of my beverage. You can do so too with your drink, unless you don't have one. In which case, you could do it with a... Empty cup of nothing? The next film I saw and didn't review was Sing, and this is where my nice, happy, fun, bubbly attitude changes a little bit because fuck this film, it's a piece of shit, fuck it. Okay, okay, it's not that bad, but it might be. I really didn't like this film. <laughs> the latest animation from Illumination Studios about a bunch of animals that are taking part in a singing contest for various different reasons it's just as bad as it sounds yeah saying it out loud i'm like yeah why did i ever think this film would be good but when it came out everyone was saying it was actually really good so i was like yeah sure i'll take along to that i like surprisingly good animated feature films for kids no there just really isn't anything to it there's just a bunch of talking animals that are thrown together and all can sing amazingly in different genres there's not really anything to their characters they just sing and they're part of a talent contest and then it ends what the fuck? And maybe I'm being too harsh on this one because I know the target audience of kids are probably going to love this film. And yeah, all the little kids that are in the cinema with me watching this did love it. Let's go. Uh, okay, that sounded bad. All the little kids in the cinema watching it with me. I'm not a pedophile. But yeah, kids will love it. So I guess it does its job there. But I expect more from kids film nowadays. And I don't think it's a suitable excuse for bad films to be like, well, it's for kids so you can get away with being shit. No, I ain't gonna take that shit. This film was painfully unfunny. I didn't laugh at all pointless and just really really obnoxious and annoying mainly in the side of the music now i've said before in previous videos that i'm not a fan of those sort of like karaoke style soundtracks that you get in a lot of kids films where the characters just sing very famous pop songs that are current at the moment i don't like that and i usually don't get on board with that but if you recall me saying in my trolls review in that film, it kind of does that, but it managed to get me on board with it because the characters were fun, the tone of the film was fun. It just made me happy, put me in a space where I was like, you know what, I don't give a shit that I'm listening to really bad pop songs sung by all of the really famous cast in this film. I didn't give a shit in that film. That is a film that did it well. But in this film, it started off annoying, and I was like, okay, maybe it's going to be like Trolls, where I'm annoyed by the karaoke style of the soundtrack, but it's going to give me some stuff that's going to make me actually appreciate it and not get really annoyed. But no, this film gave me nothing. It gave me shit characters and pissed me off. So all the time I was listening to the singing and the music in this film, I was like, well, I want to die now. This is what I mean when I say I don't like karaoke soundtracks in films. This is the film I'm going to go to and reference when I'm talking about how bad karaoke soundtracks in films are. Because the soundtrack in this film is the fucking devil. No, it needs to be put in the ground. I'm totally going too hard on this, but it's just fun. So... 
maybe that says something about myself that I enjoy taking shits on kids films <laughs> but it's happening and I'm giving Sing a two stars and now it's time to have another sip of my beverage and much like an M. Night Shyamalan third act this one's got a plot twist are you ready for this empty cup there was never any tea in it how does that feel yeah you don't know what's what now anything could happen I could be a cardboard cutout Nick Cage could be real. Now, there could have and must have been a better way to segue into this next review, but I'm not going to do that because I don't play by the rules. The next film I saw and didn't review is Fences. This being the Oscar-nominated and Oscar-winning adaptation of the Broadway play of the same name, which is now directed by Denzel Washington and stars himself and Viola Davies, as well as a bunch of other people who were also in the Broadway play, which did very well on Broadway. And yeah, this is a great film, mainly because of the incredible performances that are given by everyone, particularly Viola Davies. She won the Oscar. She deserved that Oscar. My goodness, she's so good. Her performance is one of those ones which just commands every scene she's in. As soon as she pops up on screen, I'm like... Okay, here we go. Better settle in. Buckle in for a bumpy ride here because this girl gonna show us how it's done. She did. She smashed it. I loved it. Denzel Washington is also fantastic in the film, but his performance is a little bit more stagey in that it feels like the sort of performance that I'd be watching on stage and I'd be like, yes, you are nailing it. I love you. But in a film where you have to take things a little bit more subtly, it can just feel very loud and over the top. But it works in the film and the monologues that he knows and nails are fantastically executed. Performance wise, this film is just fantastic. I really enjoyed, although I'm not sure if I can use the word enjoyed, but I appreciated the story that's being told. It was moving, it got under my skin at the points when it needed to. But I can't help but feel like as a film, I wish it had done a little bit more with the cinematic medium to make it a little bit more cinematic and to justify an adaptation of the stage play. Because in many ways, it does just feel like they're doing the stage play in front of a camera, which works. I really like the film, but I think there's more that could have been done from a different director to make this film much more incredible and to tap into some things which I don't think Denzel Washington necessarily nails from a directing standpoint. If anything else, the film just made me want to watch it on stage. I wish I'd seen this one on stage because I'm sure it was incredible. But yeah, Fences was a very solid drama driven by some incredible performances. I'm going to go ahead and give it a four stars. And that is it. Those are the three films I wanted to catch you guys up on today. That was fun. Haven't done it in a while. Maybe we'll do another one soon because there are a couple of other films which kind of slipped through that I didn't get full reviews out for. So maybe you'll see that. Let me know what you thought about either Trainspotting 2, Sing, or Fences, or all three. Go crazy. Whack it in the comments below. I'd love to know what you thought about all of those. And as usual, if you like these mini reviews in this video and you want to see me talk about more shit, go ahead and click subscribe. But until next time, stay beautiful, mother truckers.